Climate change sticks out for me because it is the story of our times and everything depends on how we handle it, from the way we live, to the way we eat, to whether or not we can live on a sustainable planet, whether there's peace, whether there's war, everything depends on it. I'm Nick Clark, the Environment Correspondent for Al Jazeera, and between us, this moment in history, it's a real time of opportunity. The state of climate change right now, I think, is perilous. It's a clear and present danger. The past decade has been the hottest on record. Everything that man has made now weighs more than all living things. Plants, humans, animals, the whole lot. 70% of animal populations have decreased in the last 50 years. And if that is not a crisis, I don't know what is. One of the biggest challenges is getting people just to engage with the story. You've really got to tell the human story. It's about how we inform the person who lives in Manchester or in Boston or in Moscow and explain to them why they should worry about what's going on in Bangladesh or in the Pacific Islands. Because sure enough, the effects of climate change are coming to a neighborhood near you. We go to places like Kiribati or Palau in the Pacific Islands and show what's at stake on Kiribati. Everybody lives on these thin strips of land and slowly but surely, they're moving further and further in because the sea is chasing them up. And soon enough, the sea will just close over the top and these people will have nowhere to live at all. Their nation will just be submerged. That's gonna happen in the next few decades unless we do something about this. Poor people are in the teeth of the climate crisis. The fishers, the farmers, they're facing the biggest challenges of all. When the cyclones hit, when the hurricanes hit, when the locust swarms come through, when the wildfires pass through, they're the ones in the global south that are hit hardest. The environment's in my bones. I was born in Tanzania in East Africa. My dad was a civil engineer and we used to go out to projects around the place, out into the wild a few times when we were camping in the Serengeti with Kilimanjaro in the distance and there'd be wild animals all around us and this, this wonder and amazement of the natural world. I think really struck me then and it certainly stayed with me. There's this one place called Ilulisat where this incredible glacier flows down, the Jakobshavn glacier, and it's the glacier that produced the iceberg that sunk the Titanic the first time I went there back in 2007. There were 4,000 or so sled dogs everywhere you went. And I interviewed an elder and he said, hey, listen, what do you hear? And I said, I just hear dogs. And he said, you come back here in 10 years time, it'll be different. So we did, and he was right. There was nothing like the cacophony of noise that we heard back in 2007, because the ice that these dogs hunt on in winter is disappearing. I used to keep dogs outside my house, but I stopped using them five years ago. And that really brought it home. Having children just changes everything. There was just this realization that suddenly what life is like for them once I'm gone and the kind of planet we leave behind really matters. The places I've seen and the animals that I've witnessed, I really want them to be able to see, but it's going to be increasingly hard for them to do so. There is this tipping point where suddenly people are engaged. When do we want to? When do we want to? People are aware how serious this problem is and how important it is that we deal with it straight away. We have got to completely rip apart the way we power the world. We've got to completely transform the way we farm, completely transform land use, completely transform transportation. Then you have renewables, which are getting cheaper and cheaper, and slowly but surely, the transition is beginning to happen. The US back into the Paris Agreement, everything has changed. When it comes to America being involved, that means it provides the momentum for the rest of the world to get stuck in and do what is necessary. The optimism lies in how we deal with emerging from the pandemic. It's a great opportunity here, with all the stimulus money there is around, to throw that into the pot and make sure that we emerge in a sustainable way. It's almost a perfect storm of opportunity to beat climate change. There's a colossal risk, a colossal threat at stake here, and we need to send the message out there that this is a fight worth fighting.